So we got a comment from one of you guys who would like to know more about racing car ergonomics in relation to the seat, steering wheel and the pedals. So here we go for episode two. So in a GT car, a GT car is a road car that's turned into a racing car. A car like this is typically more heavy than, let's say, a formula car. In a road car, you're sitting a little bit back, but you're not laying down like in a formula car or in a prototype car like at Le Mans, because your weight, your center of gravity is a smaller fraction than it is in a formula car. If I weigh 90 kilos, for instance, and a formula car is 500 kilos, my body weight represents a big fraction of the racing car's total weight. In a GT car, because GT cars are typically around 1300 kilograms uh, dry weight, a driver of 70 or 80 kilos won't make that much of a difference. So therefore you don't need to lie them down as much. So typically, because of the layout of a normal road car, which is then turned into a racing car, you're limited in space. And therefore, you have a bit of seat inclination and the steering wheel a bit closer than you would in your normal road car, but a little bit further away than in a formula car, which represents a GT driving position. To, to explain it a bit better, uh, and this car is not made for 90 kilograms, uh, one meter and 90 centimeters tall guys. So the seat in a formula car is completely bespoke. It's made to fit the individual driver and this seat does not belong to me. This is Valdemar Eriksson's Formula 4 and Formula 3 seat from when he was 15. Uh, I'm quite a lot bigger than him, uh, both width and mass wise, unfortunately. But the way that you would typically make a seat like this is to have a shell, a carbon fiber shell that you sit in and in between the shell and you, there's a garbage bag or some sort of plastic where you put in two component epoxy. And when you mix these things together, they get really warm and expand and create foam. And this foam wraps around your body so you get the most amount of support. And the most important part of sitting in a racing car or a simulator is being comfortable. So what does that mean for simulator? Now you can see the seat here quite clearly that it's quite reclined backwards. And in a typical GT car, it's not as extreme as this. It may be a bit, little bit less. As I mentioned, in a GT car, your body mass doesn't represent a big fraction of the car's total weight and you're limited in space because it's made on a road car and then turned into a racing car. And on this simulator that we got from Phoenix Sim, we've done a compromise between a formula driving position and a GT driving position where we can both heel and toe with three pedals in an old formula car or an old BMW if we want. And we can also drive a GT driving position with an adjustable steering column, adjustable seat and adjustable pedals. So the steering wheel can move backwards and forward and up and down. The seat can move backwards and forward and so can the pedals. So when we talk about limb lengths, then you can get the most comfortable in your simulator, which is the most important part of ergonomics. So the steering wheel in terms of its height relative to your shoulders is quite important because now this is an adjustable steering column. So if I just loosen this, you'll see it spring up and down and it can also move backwards and forwards to suit different drivers. But in a GT car, it's a bit further away because of the factors that we've already talked about. But the most important part is that you're not straining your wrists, your elbow and your shoulder, because the further away the steering wheel is, the more strain you put on your shoulder muscles. And the closer you have the steering wheel, the more strain you put on your wrists. And because you're sitting here for quite a long time with quite a lot of forces going through your arms in order to steer the car, it's important that you're using all of your models, muscles and not overworking one group. So a tip for you guys at home in terms of the steering wheel height. Get it close to the center of the steering wheel to your shoulder height. So when you hold the steering wheel, you're in a relaxed position. So if you're using a table mount, the table will be the corresponding height. So the steering wheel 
is in line with your shoulders and not too tilted backwards and not too tilted forwards, but within five to 10 degrees. I can feel here, personally, when I turn the steering wheel, I'm straining my wrists quite a lot when I get up here and my shoulder a lot because it's a bit too far away. So in order to get it a bit closer uh, and a bit more comfortable, I'll take the steering wheel down here because I can feel in my shoulders that when I relax, this is where my shoulders and arms would like to be in this simulator, which is completely subjective, of course. But with the guideline of around 40 to 55 degrees arc in your arms and not fully extended and not all the way in here, then I'm sure I don't strain any muscle group too much. You can see we have three pedals here. We have an accelerator, we have a brake and we have a clutch. The most important pedal here is the brake because the Invicta pedals are made to be used like a real set of racing pedals. So I need to be able to press on this really hard in order to get a realistic braking feel. And you can see there's almost zero flex here when I push it down completely. My left leg will pretty much only be actuating the clutch, where my right foot will be actuating both the brake and the throttle in order to heel and toe. If this was a set with only throttle and brake, it would have to be moved over to the left. So when I brake repeatedly, putting a lot of force into this brake pedal, it would be in a nice straight line to my left leg because you'll most likely be sitting here for prolonged periods of time and putting a lot of force into this. So in order to not strain your knee, the pedals would have to be moved to the left if there was no clutch. But because we have a clutch, my left leg will pretty much live over here. On the brake pedal, you can see when I push this now, my leg still has a little bit of angle. So in terms of the brake pedal, you need to make sure that when you actuate the brake fully and you have your maximum brake pressure, that your leg is not fully extended and you still have a lot of control about the pedal input. And this will be a little bit weird if you haven't used a real set of racing pedals or the Invicta pedals, a hydraulic set of pedals because you'll feel like you're about to break it, but trust me, you're not. But you have to remember, when you're putting in a lot of force here, like we are here, don't extend your leg fully. So to summarize, the most important part about seat ergonomics in a simulator is that you're comfortable. In a racing car, it's a bit different because your seating position has a physical impact on the way the car accelerates and handles. But in a formula car, you're laying more back your steering wheel is higher up, whereas in a GT car it's a bit further away and you're sitting a bit more upwards. But in a simulator it's not really the same because your body doesn't have a physical impact on the way the car you're driving in the simulator uh, has. So it's more important that you're comfortable in your simulator. But if you want a realistic driving experience then you can use these tips.